Dear friends in Christ, as Peter, James, and John trudged up the mountain with Jesus, they might have been thinking about his words spoken in the verses right before today's gospel reading. Speaking of himself, Jesus had said, the Son of Man must suffer many things. He must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And then Jesus had said these strong and challenging words. If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Following Jesus can be tough going. When you're following Jesus, you're crucifying your sinful nature. That's painful. When you're following Jesus, the sinful world sees you as an enemy. That's difficult. When you're following Jesus, Satan wants to take you down, and that's dangerous. Following Jesus can be tough going. It was tough going for Peter and James and John climbing up that mountain. Perhaps there was some slipping and falling, some bruised knees and scraped knuckles along the way. They might have been thinking, well, I guess this is what Jesus meant by taking up a cross because this is no fun whatsoever climbing up this mountain. They might not have been thinking about the suffering and death of Jesus about which he had spoken, but they were keenly aware of their own problems. And that can happen to us too. We can get so focused on our pains and our problems that we lose sight of what Jesus went through to accomplish the forgiveness of our sins on the cross. The indescribable agony, the excruciating suffering, physically, mentally, spiritually. My God, why have you forsaken me, he cries out. The spiritual agony of the cross. We can get so caught up in asking why me? That we fail to ask, why him? Why was the sinless Son of God nailed to a cross to pay for my sins? You call that justice? The answer is yes, because God is not only just, God is also merciful. In his justice, God did not let sin go unpunished. He punished sin. But he carried out his justice upon his sinless son so that we sinners could receive God's mercy the forgiveness of sins, and life everlasting. That is God's answer to the question, why him? When they got to the top of the mountain, it wasn't tough going anymore. Scripture says, as Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. One Christian author puts it this way. He writes, Suddenly Jesus started to change. He started to shine. The fatigue disappeared from his eyes. His hands and his feet 
dirtied by the dusty climb, became cleaner and cleaner. Even his clothes changed. They became whiter and whiter. They lost all their dirt and all the traces of their contact with the earth. And there was Jesus, glorious and fresh, young and shining, radiant as the sun. End quote. And to top it off, suddenly there stood Moses and Elijah, one of them personally buried by God, as we heard a few moments ago, and the other taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. Moses and Elijah, representing the law and the prophets of the Old Covenant, standing there talking with Jesus, the one who fulfilled all of the commands of God and all of the promises of the prophets. What a moment that was. What a moment that was. What were the three disciples thinking about in that moment? Answer, not much. They were taking a nap. They couldn't stay awake on the mountaintop. And as you might remember, they couldn't stay awake in the Garden of Gethsemane either. Neither the glory of Jesus nor his agony could keep them from taking their rest. But once they roused themselves from their slumber, Peter and James and John thought they had found a shortcut to heaven. They weren't thinking about denying themselves and carrying a cross anymore. No, no, this was glorious. They wanted to stay there on the mountain. Peter suggested building a tent village. But as scripture says, he didn't know what he was saying. Sometimes we don't either. Sometimes our tiredness or our busyness keeps us from paying attention to Jesus. Sometimes we become resentful and self-pitying when suffering and hardship come our way. We would prefer to stay on the mountaintop. But Jesus, Jesus is calling us to follow him. Dear friends, Ash Wednesday and Lent and Holy Week remind us that the path to glory goes through Golgotha. The way to the crown is the way of the cross. And that's exactly what Moses and Elisha and Jesus, Elijah and Jesus were talking about. The Bible says they spoke about Jesus' departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. That word departure means his death on the cross, as when someone departs this life. There on the mountaintop of transfiguration, they were talking about the cross. The cross. The suffering and death that Christ was going to face. You might say, speaking figuratively, there was a shadow on the mountain. And it was the shadow of the cross looming over the glory. But the cross was not the end. The deep darkness of Good Friday was followed by the brilliant light of Easter. And you might say, speaking figuratively, that the light of resurrection glory shining from the empty tomb illuminated the cross from the other side, thus casting a shadow 
over the mountain. And so it is with us who follow Christ by faith. For the Christian, the sufferings of this life are not eliminated, but they are illuminated. They are illuminated by the light of the glory that is to come. The difficulties of today are seen in the light of eternity. As the Apostle Paul wrote, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Not worth comparing. Not because the sufferings are small, but because the glory will be so great. Not worth comparing. Not because the pain is not bitter, but because the delight will be so sweet. Not worth comparing. Not because the sorrow is not deep, but because the joy will be so high. Not worth comparing. Not because death is not real, but because life will be eternal. Dear friend, the cross was not the end for Jesus, and death is not the end for those who follow him. The end of earthly life is the beginning of real life, heavenly life, glorious life. This is true. Why? Because Jesus Christ lived, suffered, died, and rose again for you. Please take this personally. Take it personally. In all that Jesus did, he took your place in the sight of God. In all that he did, he had you in mind. And he did it all for you. To win the forgiveness of our sins through his holy, perfect, all-sufficient sacrifice of himself. On that mountain of transfiguration, God the Father spoke from the cloud and said, This is my Son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And so we listen. We listen to Jesus, the chosen Son of God, as he says, If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Dear friend, as we follow in the steps of Jesus, the suffering, and there is suffering, the suffering lasts for a season. But the glory, the glory, oh, the glory will last forever. And if life sometimes seems dark in the shadow of the cross. Remember the light that is casting the shadow is the light of resurrection glory on the other side of the cross. May the peace of God that passes all understanding Stand guard over our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.